you need to divorce two brains if you're a product builder in this space. One is like why you're building and what you're building, and what you're excited about. And the second is like the generative greed, <laughs> degen greed on like trading and, and, and making money. Because I'm like, if you let the two brains come together, it's going to get very messy for you. And your enthusiasm, your motivation is going to be this like toxic mix of like, why are you building, you know? Um, and so I think obviously for anyone that's in it for degenerative, the degen greed, uh, they've lost a ton of enthusiasm as things cool down and then you got to like, you know, uh, like seek shelter. But I think for a lot of people that are building it for, for what I would call the right reasons, which are like the primitives are changing and it's the promise of like a better future. All right, new episode of the Where It Happens podcast. Welcome, welcome. Today's episode, I want to start off by telling a little story. Uh, when I was 21, uh, I was working on a app called Five By, and it was this video discovery app that allowed you to find the most interesting videos on YouTube. And I was living in Canada at the time, but I had to make a trip to Silicon Valley. I had to see like where all these big companies uh, started and, and grew from. So I went there for a few weeks and I got introduced to this entrepreneur who had started and sold a company uh, uh, to Google. I was already following him on Twitter, so someone who I, I knew about. So I was really excited to meet him. And I met him for coffee. Uh, I remember it was super rainy out and I, and I, you know, I walk in there wet a few minutes late and I was just so excited to be there. Um, I apologize for being late. And I asked him, you know, what are you up to? What are you up to now? And he told me about how he was starting a video discovery app, how he had raised millions of dollars. And I just, I felt my stomach turn. I was like, oh my God, is this, is this my idea? Is he, is he working on my idea? Of course he couldn't be. But I ended up asking him to tell me more about it. And I said, hey, could you, could you maybe show me what you're working on? So he pulls up his laptop and he starts pulling up the mock-ups for this app and literally pixel for pixel, it was the same, like we had the same idea and I cringed, right? I was this, I was this early twenties, uh, you know, not as much experience as him living in Canada. He was this big shot, raised millions of dollars had hired all these Google engineers, uh, and it was tough. And at the time, you know, I left that coffee shop and I didn't really have mm, mm, like a support network of entrepreneurs to, 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 to call and say like, you know, to, vo to voice how I'm feeling. And that's why this episode, I wanted to bring on my good friend, Danny Trin. Uh, later I moved to San Francisco and Danny became one of those friends who uh, I could definitely vent with. And I think that it's really important for entrepreneurs, founders, makers to have someone or ideally multiple people that they can be real with. Uh, so during this episode, uh, there's tons of gems from Danny uh, about the importance of having that support network. Um, and, you know, I hope you really like the episode. Before we bring on Danny Trin, uh, I wanted to make an announcement. The reason why we started the Where It Happens podcast was we wanted to give you an inside look into what happens behind closed doors. There's so many conversations of well-known people happening behind closed doors. What if these conversations were open to everyone? What if it was like a FaceTime, basically, um, that you know two well-known entrepreneurs are having that was public and one of the things i realized you know we've done a ton of interviews is the most interesting conversations happen with makers they happen with builders and they happen in these three categories community people commerce people and creators and why well it's because those people are shaping the world um, and we're shifting the format to only interview those types of people so if you're interested in those categories, you are going to be so excited about the, the guests we have lined up. Uh, the other quick announcement is my co-host, Sahil Bloom, is no longer going to be co-hosting with me. It's just going to be me. 
Um, he's focusing on his book, and I'm focusing on this podcast, uh, as well as my company, Late Checkout. So uh, I'm excited uh, for him, and I'm, I'm really excited about uh, where the podcast is going, and I know you're going to enjoy uh, this conversation with Danny Trin and what we've got cooking for you because it is incredible. Thank you. Well, 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 speaking of that, by the way, I remember the last time I was on, it's crazy to think that it was six months ago. Um, so much has changed this year. I feel like at the end, you all were jokingly mentioning Partiful. And, and I think I joked, I was like, are you all behind Partiful? And let me tell you, Partiful, since that time, good Lord, I, I feel like I see it everywhere. And um, it's just been... Uh, and crazy to see good for them you know yeah so you want to do you want to describe what partiful is for people who didn't listen to that episode and why why you might think it's interesting yeah i mean it's like it's a uh, paperless post uh brought into the new era for mobile uh or like you know for sms and just the way people might do invites and as obviously things like facebook events and other things have died uh there's been obviously a need for to make it really easy to organize um, and at least here in New York, I've been seeing Partiful go out. Even some there's a birthday party or, or, or whatnot or a dinner, and they sent out a Partiful link. Um, and it's it's really smart, you know. It's on SMS. Um, it's like sorry, it's a website that you can just like text or, or snap to somebody. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm genuinely surprised to see that it like has consolidated and it's like the thing for sending out like a really quick impromptu invite, you know. Yeah, I think what's cool about it is like when I when I chatted with the founder, she was like, yeah, it's basically like, I don't know, paperless post, but for Gen Z. And when I when I go to websites where it's like, hey, it's this product for Gen Z or it's this product for millennials, like that never works. Like you can't say it's for that person. You just kind of have to like yeah. when I go to I just went to the Partiful website and it's like it's not like it says Gen Z anywhere on this website. Yeah. Just like I mean, the- I'm, I I know nothing about the team behind it, but uh, I wish them all the success. It's pretty cool, uh, especially in a space that's so crowded or is full of so many uh, so many dead <laughs> folks who have tried it out. Uh, yeah, wait, who are the Partiful founders? Today's episode is brought to you by a company and product that has literally changed my life and one that I use every single day. I started taking AG1 in 2011 because I wanted to feel great. It's been a staple of my morning routine ever since. Yeah, that's 10 years and 99% compliant. I met the CEO when we were training at the same strength training facility way back in the day. He had been creating an early version of the product to battle his own gut health issues when he realized how challenging and expensive it was to create an optimal routine on your own. I started taking it during those college baseball years and was completely hooked. Over the years, it has kept me feeling on point physically and mentally. The best part, it fits into whatever lifestyle or diet I'm currently experimenting with, from keto to paleo to vegan and more. It's a tiny micro habit that you can execute daily that has large, long-term, and compounding benefits. The product has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is trusted by a long list of professional athletes and leading health experts. I love it, they do, and I know you will too. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash W-I-H. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash W-I-H to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. You won't regret it. For the last 10 years, I've been building internal tools to help my sales teams or engineering teams work at blazing speeds. But the catch with internal tools is it's really hard to build from scratch and maintaining them also requires a lot of engineering work and it's just frankly super tedious. Thankfully, there's now Retool. Retool is a much faster way to build internal tools. It has a complete library of 100 plus fully featured accessible UI components that you can just drag and drop into any interface. Retool's platform lets you build the custom internal tools your team needs 10 times faster. It's a one platform to build your interface. You can connect any data source, any API, and publish employee-facing apps, 
in record time. It's also super flexible. You can write custom code nearly anywhere to customize how your app looks and works. And app environments, SSO, permissions, and other critical app functionality are all available completely out of the box. The result? You can build production-grade internal tools without the wasted effort of Googling component libraries, debugging dependencies, or rewriting boilerplate code. Thousands of teams at companies like Amazon, DoorDash, NBC, Late Checkout, collaborate around custom-built retooled apps to operate faster, operate better. Also, teams of up to five can build retool apps for free. So you shouldn't be surprised why we're big retool fans at Where It Happens. To learn more, you just got to go to retool.com. Um, I only met one of them. Um, I, I'm blanking on her name. Her name is, let's see, pull it up. Um, I think her name is Joy Tao. Oh no, Shreya. That's who I met. Um, and yeah, she's probably in her mid twenties, really product design or like focus. Like you can see it in the product. Like it feels very much yeah. like, I mean, you get it. It's like when you use the Partiful product, it like, it feels really good. When you use Eventbrite, like you want to take a shower. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't remember the last time I used Eventbrite, but uh, yeah, I guess. And by the way, it looks like you just used Eventbrite because you know that hair is looking looking real, 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 real clean. You know? Uh, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just got out of an, I just got out of an Eventbrite uh, session. That's why. Uh, yeah, for the yeah. listeners, I just I just took a shower. So yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, what else? What are you seeing these days? You seeing anything fun lately that, uh, that that's caught your eye? Um, I'm curious, like, you know, I've been seeing a lot of stuff, you know, we chatted a little bit about web three. Um, you know, obviously a lot has changed in web three over the last six months. Um, and I was just right before this, uh, in between shower and this call, I was, I was, uh, I was reading Koopa Troopa's, uh, newsletter around music NFTs. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I've just been fascinated with like web three and music, uh, thinking about yeah. royalties, thinking about like, you know, the role of the label, um, curious your perspective, um, on music NFTs and then also yeah. just in web three in general, like, um, yeah. what has changed? Are you still bullish? You know, talk to me. Yeah. I mean. I guess two things. A, especially with music NFT is definitely not my bag. Um, I know a lot of people who were really kind of excited about it, or and I know there's a lot of energy there. I think obviously a lot remains to be seen. So you know, um, I think I saw actually something randomly that was like called like sound, Sounds X Y Z or something. They released a, it was like some protocol or something. And anyways, very excited for them or like whatever. Finding out is it there there, but I think that's the question: is there a there there? So I think you have all these people like kind of just telling each other it's going to be awesome or it's the future um, without, you know, not a ton behind it. And, but I, but that's not to take away from um, them, them trying to change uh, the foundation of it all. I think web three in general kind of reminds me of web two right now. And <laughs> that like, I don't think a lot of people remember web two, how web two, at least from where I'm sitting ended and that you had this like, Oh, the future of the web is social. And you had all these like microblogging competitors and like, oh, Web2 is so exciting. It is Ajax. We're going to age. Everything's going to be alive and it's going to be awesome. But there was definitely a moment where like things got really tough and rough, like 2008-ish or like things consolidated. A lot of that stuff is now dead, you know, and, and it's nothing like, wrong with those founders or those people. But just, you know, even though there was this generation, of, you know, the Internet becoming more modern or things that we now accept to be table stakes, a lot of stuff was cleared out. And I think, you know, as we're in winter, we're so firmly in winter again, uh, you know, there's just a natural consolidation happening of like, you know, some of the less sturdy and frankly, some of the more hypey, noisy stuff uh, is getting washed away. Um, and it's, yeah, it's forcing folks to go back and focus. It's like, you know, it's, it's beyond winter now. It's like nuclear winter. It's like, um, and I think it's bigger than any of the just Web3 stuff. It's like the world we live in today. Um where where it's just really really rough i mean one thing 
So I'll segue really quickly. Like I'm pretty excited about October 11th. Uh, Japan's opening its borders um, for like non-business um, excused travel. And it's like the US dollar versus the yen is, tr- is an all time crazy high. Um, and it's like, that's a bang. I have nothing to do with like crypto. That's just the world we live in. Like the, the you know, things are just getting crazy and hectic. Like they think that the euros at a 20 year historic low against the dollar and whatever, like all I'll say is um, it's kind of a crazy time we live in. So I think web three, yeah, suffering for like that entire uh, generation of, uh, of companies right now, but so many others are too. Um, so it's, uh, it's interesting to watch because I, I will say, I think some of the best, most resilient founders and teams tend to get started or tend to survive and prove themselves for surviving periods like this. Um, and, you know, this period is far from even over or frankly, even getting started. I think we're still in the free fall, in the, like in this, the depth of some darkness. So, um, yeah, uh, God, wishing Godspeed to all the folks out there trying their darndest to stay afloat and uh, keep building and stay focused. Um, yeah. Could you... Uh... How about you? Yeah, could you talk like I want I want to come back to the web three thing, but I want to actually jump to to web two for a second. Living in San Francisco yeah. during the heyday. Our buddy Addison just sent us a uh who was also, you know, in that in that scene just sent us a text message of like a video of our buddy Jeff and a few other people just like being in San Francisco at that era and you know, social era, mobile was coming out. It felt like really exciting. Um, yeah. could you talk more about like, and, and you were in it too, dude, like you were, yeah, you were at dig, which was like one of the most, you know, hottest startups in social at the time path, one of the hottest mobile startups at the time. Talk like, what was it like in your, in your mind being in SF mm. at that time? Yeah. Um, because like, we've got thousands of listeners who just like, well, weren't there. What, what, one thing. One, one thing I'd, I'd say is that, okay, that's definitely 2008, you know, financial crash of in its own right. You know, that's, that's the year I got to SF. Um, you know, everyone now knows SF to be this place where people are way overpaid. Like the minimum like salary out of college for a good CS uh, degree is like something crazy. You know, like everyone basically has like, expense lifestyles with like free kitchen, mini kitchens and laundry and buses and stuff. Um, and, and I think the one thing I'll, I'll say is like, when you got to SF 2008, like there wasn't a ton of money floating around. Like it wasn't like every company that was alive was overfunded and, you know, there was just cash everywhere. It was kind of like this, um, it was this place where you, you, you went there because you're just attracted to this, hanging out and seeing what other people were building, you know, and it wasn't because it was super lucrative. I, I'd argue, you know, Facebook, sorry, Google had gone public, but it really was probably until like Facebook IPO 2012 or so when things got kind of, kind of crazy. You know, um, and so I'd say what was great about that period, and that's around the same time, you know, Addison and was out there, and that we all, you know, uh, so many friends, friends that I keep to this day, lifelong friends were made. Was it was just like, hey, uh, what are you up to? What are you building? Uh, my first apartment was in Hayes Valley because it was the place I could afford, not because Hayes Valley, which is now like the cool, the cool kids little little mid market area. Like it's it's not it's just like you you were kind of just surviving and 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 trying to build stuff, and like again. <laughs> It wasn't this crazy, like overvalued time. It was just a lot of fun. I think, frankly, there were so many people that had such bad, terrible, apocalyptic experiences with the first bubble, like 2000s, that they would almost like laugh about this idea of Web2 or p- people doing startups again um, and like trying to make businesses or, or, or whatnot and figure it out. And, you know, a lot of that was fair because a lot of those companies didn't make it. Uh, but what's funny is some of them are still, still going strong today. Um, yeah, and I, it was a fun time. I think what was cool about SF in that time, in or you know, I don't know if your question is just about SF or Web two, but I think it was, what was so cool about the time was you would bump shoulders casually with some of the best builders ever, with like no agenda and there was no ego. It was just like, hey, well, oh shoot, like oh you're working on that, like oh tell me more. Uh, and you're like, well, do you want to get a burrito? <laughs> like you know, walk around the mission, like get a fair lido or something, or grab beer somewhere. And and it was uh, it was just a really I don't know. Uh, it, was, it was just a really. So, yeah, a couple of things. Time. Yeah. A, yeah. A couple of things. Here. So, first of all, I completely agree. Like, the start, like today, like, there's tons of startups that are like flush with cash. Back then, yeah. like, even the startups that were quote unquote flush with cash, like, 
when we we didn't there wasn't that much money there it was very much like us versus them like didn't path you know i don't know if, yeah path was tried or google tried to buy path at one time and i remember like i think it was like a hundred million dollars or more and i remember like everyone was kind of like no we can't do like path users were like no no way they can't do it like it it felt very us and them now. I mean, I guess it feels like that a little bit, uh, or sorry, it felt very us versus them back then. It still feels that way a little bit now, but it's not, it was way, it felt way more of that back then. Do you agree? Yeah. I I think back then everything was a little faster and looser because you didn't know what you didn't know. Right. Like I think 2010, that that particular year, uh, things changed. The iPhone four changed. Like it was like a seismic shift. Right. Finally, the camera was good enough. Right. And then in the following years, as, as connections got better and like the mobile, your cellular connection got better, there was a seismic shift. And so there was no like right or wrong way to do things. Right. Whereas I, I'd say like, if you look at consumer now, like, I, I think it's a pain cave for a founder to go out without some angle or strategy and how they're going to get distribution, you know, like what advantage are you going to have? Because say you make something great, it's going to get copied or snatched up by somebody so fast, you know? Um, and, and so, yeah, I think, especially around then it was, the, it was a little bit of the wild west, but you didn't know, like you were undergoing the shift to mobile a lot. And I know there's that entire solo mo movement, which made me cringe at the time. It still makes me cringe to say it out loud today. Uh, but like, explain, it, yeah, it was, explain it was, what that is yeah. for people who don't know what that is. The, well, the, there are pillars that now sound really damn obvious, <laughs> which is like, can you make social location, mobile, um, uh, experiences or, or companies or products? And yeah, at the time it was an entire wave, right? Like it began with like the first bit was, two, I think it's, you know, South by 2009, where you had um, Foursquare and Gowalla, you know, and it's like, at the, at the now it seems so medieval and primitive to be like, oh, my phone knows where GPS, I might be able to check in to a place where I'm at, right? And obviously, so many people have built on that, right? Um, but I, I, yeah, it, 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 there was this crazy Cambrian explosion. <laughs> Uh, people, you know, taking different bits and Legos and, and, and assembling different ideas, you know, off of these like big new things that were unlocked, right? Like Gowalla was the competitor and it's cool to see Josh Williams and, and co. And uh, he's gotten like a lot of that original Gowalla team back and they're out trying to do it again. Um, but, you know, Gowalla was at the exact same time and was building some very different things with like these little collectibles uh, and little like passports, you know, that you, 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 could, uh, you could drop or, or leave for others, you know? And so those are just the first two. Like, I think, you know, there were so many other companies that got going around that time, you know, obviously Instagram won it all at that time, um, you know, but, but there were so many others, right? Like there, I mean, so I like, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it kind of is a reminder that like at any given moment, especially like when you talk about Web3 or any like next generation of companies, yeah, a ton of the things that sound great and awesome are probably going to go, you know, be, be like, be, you know, erased. <laughs> or, 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 or not make it, but, um, yeah, it was, it was a fun time. Um, yeah, sorry, my mind just randomly thought of Vine for a second and I was like, oh, I miss, I miss Vine. I don't know if Vine is firmly under the solo. It was definitely this, a social and mobile. I don't, I don't know if there's a ton of location stuff in there, but, uh, yeah, Vine, Vine, Vine was crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like vine had a magic moment for so many people when people downloaded it and it felt just so different like it was six seconds i think right those six second videos and um it was also so you know we're talking about particle like really well designed like vine was also really well designed um totally right um and i think um, the other cool thing about it was you i mean it was the precursor to TikTok, of course but like you could post something on Instagram, get no love, but post something on Vine. And like, you know, I have a friend, you know, I had random, like my friend Jerome Jar, who got like millions of followers on Vine was like this random French guy who just would post funny videos and then change his life, you know? And I I think that's the crazy, the crazy part to me is that probably there's there's, there's hundreds of millions, there's there's a generation of TikTok, um, either users or creators who probably may not even remember Vine. But uh, yeah, Vine is definitely in the DNA, you know, like the looping video, the talent show, like how, how funny can you be within those constraints, you know, um, even the idea of stitching things together, right? Like obviously Vine wasn't the first to do that, but they were the first really to bring that, um, 
you know, that, that mechanic out there. And yeah, I miss it. Now, yeah. candidly, I don't think they, 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 they died a slow and painful death. Um, but you know, it's just the nature of our industry, right? It's like, everyone's kind of building on the shoulders of other people. Um, yeah. And, and it's uh, what, what a good app. What a good time. I guess that's kind of where I want to shift gears a bit, which is, okay. I, I figured it out. I want to shift gears to, we, we lived in San Francisco in our twenties during the height of, you know, social and mobile. And we, we partook in that economy and we yeah. had some really high highs and some really low lows. Um, right. Yeah. I I can picture them now. And, um, there's a whole, like we were the young kids then, like we were the Gen Z back then. Right. Like we were, we were the up and comers now. And we're in our thirties. Like we're, we've been there and, and done that and we're kind of older. So what do you, like what can we, what do you take away from your time doing social mobile sf that you can impart mm. to the next generation in terms of how do you build products that are going to you know that people are going to love i you you know one thing i'd say there's a, there's a lot to unpack there but but I, I it's funny when you said been there done that i i actually something i try to pride myself in is the, this notion of the beginner's mind um, that just because, you know, you maybe, maybe learned a particularly painful lesson or you learned, you tried something that didn't work, um, that you can like continue to like, keep that freshness and that, that enthusiasm to keep exploring, you know, things you're interested in. Um, it's funny how I said I would never work in consumer social again, but look, look at where I am now. Um, and it's like, <laughs> how did we end up back here? Um, and one, one thing I'd say is with the benefit of hindsight on that time was the joy of, of beginning the joy of starting uh, was a superpower right like something I, I tell all kinds of young people is when they get started especially designers and creatives in our industry is like you may not be money rich but you're definitely time rich and when you have when you're time wealthy which means you have like a ton of times like work nights and weekends and like work maybe of like a, on a schedule that it would be uncomfortable for a lot of other people who have other life stuff, whatever who have like uh, kids or whatever um there's nothing wrong with having kids by the way um, it's just that you, you can try more things and you can be a beginner much more frequently. Um, and that's something I think is super important, you know, like especially as our industry gets fuller and fuller people, just like you and I, who've had a certain set of experiences and certain years out there, there's all these people who want to tell you like how you, how you should be doing things or how you should approach things. Or let me tell you about that time we were growing LinkedIn, or let me tell you about that time we were making Tinder grow on USC and UCLA's campus. And it's like, okay, Sure. Maybe it worked that way then, but it may not work that way now. And I, I think that that was one thing in SF that really caught on. I, 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 if some of my most painful memories are like when you're listening to the experts or listening to like the, 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 you know, the people who have been there, done that, tell you how you need to be growing or tell you how you need to be approaching a problem. Um, you know, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was often really bad advice. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's one story that actually resonates really specifically with me, which is we were, you know, all in on mobile and like building out apps for the iPhone and, and Android. Um, and literally there was someone who insisted that because his grandmother didn't have a smartphone, we need to like dedicate two web engineers to sending out an email digest to her uh, for her to like, you know, um, be able to, to follow. And in hindsight, now I'd be, I, I would tell that person to fuck off. But in the moment, you're like, oh, wow, this is a very experienced, smart person who's telling us about the total addressable, whatever, being back, that and the other. OK, yes, let's spend two of our four web engineers. That makes sense, right? Um, and, and, and yeah, what, what I'd say, I don't want to cherry pick on that person, um, but I'd say like in general, SF, I'll probably carry these values with me lifelong, that there will always be some notion of like experts are like the right people telling you how things need to be. And that, especially in consumer, the way you would grow is constantly evolving, right? It's it's so dynamic. Um, yeah, I'm curious for you, uh, your take, because I know that you, we, we had we experienced some of the highest highs and lowest lows together. I'm very curious for you. Uh, if you flip the question on you, um, you know, what comes to mind? Well, I mean, it, going back to our earlier conversation about where the pod is going, like, I don't I, I want to bring on builders. Like, I don't want to bring on VCs. Like, and I, I think that, and this is kind of a hot take, I think, but just because you invest in a company doesn't mean it's your company, 
So a lot of VCs, what they'll say is, yeah. oh, one of our companies, oh, I inv so they invested out of their fund, which they invested from LPs, so not even their own money. Yeah. They're going yeah. and they invest, and then they're saying, oh, Partiful, yeah, that's one of our companies. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, Chad. Um, yeah. But just because you wired the money does not, you were not in the trenches and you are not in the trenches, you play a, a meaningful role in your connection with the business and it wouldn't e exist in its current state without you. But, yeah. but I still, but I still think that, you know, I much rather when I, when I'm trading notes around building consumer products, I want to talk to Shreya. I don't want to talk to yeah. the VC here. Yeah. Like I, I think, yeah, all perspectives are valuable. Well, that I, I I can agree with you that I know there's some sometimes folk like VCs are well, like it's almost like they're claiming credit for the success of the company, singular credit. I mean, it's like yeah, of course you help them, but like it's yes, yeah, it's, it's a little dirty when when they it's almost like they're taking credit for for the success of the business. And what's it was especially funny though is like when they take credit years after, or like talk shade. What's worse is not even taking credit when they talk when they when they talk shade on a founder who has been successful after them. Whatever, and I think that's the it's an entire other tangent. Um, but yeah, man, like uh, builders tend to be the most fun to hang out with, you know, shared misery and shared joy, you know, uh, of, of of the process. And yeah, I don't know. Most VCs, I mean, that's how that's how we bonded. Yeah. Like we bonded. I don't know if you remember, but we it was right before you you know you had a trip out. And we went to what was that beer garden in SF? Oh, Southern Pacific. South, Southern Pacific. Pacific. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember exactly where we were. We were sent, we were at the second level and mm. you were just telling me about free, which you should tell people what it was. Cause it was like ahead of its time. So like crazy ahead of its time. And it was so, yeah. so right on so many levels and you were having a hard time, frankly, like in, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, not because you weren't executing well, but just because startups are difficult and consumer social is difficult and teams are hard and, and, it, and we were bonding over that shared misery, I think. Um, but yeah, tell folks yeah. what free was the timing, yeah. you know, because I think it's relevant. Well, so I'll give some context that basically at path, one of my, my last things I worked on was our, our messenger. And I remember I literally put like the Targaryen symbol, the dragon symbol from game of Thrones, on the room and we ship that messenger and mind you this is before facebook messenger got their act together like facebook messenger like used was like a very basic thing at the time um and and we wanted to really build like what would, what would be what would be paths take you know on a messenger and like kind of went crazy there and so i'll say is from building that messenger saw holy cow the numbers around the messenger are just different you know, like we also technically have the same loop as stories, what you now would consider stories where you could post a photo and someone like go, go post a photo once a day and like come back like five, 10 times a day to see who else has seen it. Cause that's what we call them. Seen it. Um, but the numbers change for messenger. Like the, the amount of times someone uses an app, it's a messenger, just like crazy. Right. And so I was like, okay, I, I really want to go build a messenger, but I want to build a messenger um, with a purpose. And the purpose is like, you know, it owns that first message in the conversation. Um, and, and the classic pitch I would tell everyone is like reminds you of like this Aziz and Zari joke where he says like if you look on my phone on a Sunday I look like a psycho because I'm texting all my friends hey want to grab brunch hey want to grab brunch hey want to grab brunch you know um, I think our friend Nikita has a funny joke where he says like every social founder at one point tries to make an app for like getting people to hang out together IRL um, and it's it's so true I think free free is definitely my my uh, my my version of that lesson. Um, I think free, yeah, it was, it was it, uh, the, the, the other way I would refer to it was like, I grew up on AOL Instant Messenger and I missed the green dot. When you'd go home, sign in, see your buddy, let's see who's green. And like for the green people, you could chat with them and they were your friends. Uh, and I wanted that for the real world. And so I just wanted to see who was free any given moment, kind of like the horn of Gondor or like the bat signal or whatever. We built it. I won't bore you with all the details or build, bore the people here with all the details, but um, solve so many problems. I think there are pieces of its new user experience onboarding that still echo in a lot of apps today. Um, you know, uh, I, I um, we had a ton of fun building it, but also a ton of yeah, a ton of joy, a ton of misery. Um, and yeah, I, I think uh, when at the time that I, I also remember distinctly that, that they were at Southern Pacific, 
I, I think it was one of those moments where as a founder, you kind of like, you have, you, you start to get a muscle for sketching out nine, 12, 18 months in advance, even, which at the time as a 22, 23 year old, I was not very good at, you know? Um, and I was like, damn, I think, I think this is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. Um, and, and what I'll say is I think a lot of my conversation with other founders today, and I see myself in so many founders I hang with today, like it's that realization of like, damn, I don't know who else I can talk with about like this, you know, because they're because think about it with a team, you have to like give great, you know, you're trying to keep the inspiration like that, that, that energy on Mondays and get through the week of like, yeah, here's the vision. And like, maybe your investor updates, maybe you don't know truly how to be that candid, like, you don't, you know, you don't, or, or to speak that bluntly. Cause you also want to like inspire confidence and faith in the team. And I think it's a very special type of like trusted relationship. It can be with investors too, but, or like other founders or operators you, 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 you trust, but it's a very specific type of relationship where you can like kind of share that, you know, um, and, and, and talk through it and really sketch out all the options, you know, for what they'll all look like. Um, yeah, and I, I remember that day. It was a, it was a special day and a special weekend, but we don't have to dive into that. Um, you know, I uh, yeah, but um, that was that was a good that was a, that was a meaningful that was a really meaningful time. For the last ten years, I've been building internal tools to help my sales teams or engineering teams work at blazing speeds. But the catch with internal tools is it's really hard to build from scratch and maintaining them also requires a lot of engineering work and it's just frankly super tedious. Thankfully, there's now Retool. Retool is a much faster way to build internal tools. It has a complete library of 100 plus fully featured accessible UI components that you can just drag and drop into any interface. Retool's platform lets you build the custom internal tools your team needs 10 times faster. It's a one platform to build your interface. You can connect any data source, any API, and publish employee-facing apps in record time. It's also super flexible. You can write custom code nearly anywhere to customize how your app looks and works. And app environments, SSO, permissions, and other critical app functionality are all available completely out of the box. The result? You can build production-grade internal tools without the wasted effort of Googling component libraries, debugging dependencies, or rewriting boilerplate code. Thousands of teams at companies like Amazon, DoorDash, NBC, Late Checkout, Collaborate around custom-built retooled apps to operate faster, operate better. Also, teams of up to five can build retool apps for free. So you shouldn't be surprised why we're big retool fans at Where It Happens. To learn more, you just got to go to retool.com. Today's episode is brought to you by a company and product that has literally changed my life and one that I use every single day. I started taking AG1 in 2011 because I wanted to feel great. It's been a staple of my morning routine ever since. Yeah, that's 10 years and 99% compliant. I met the CEO when we were training at the same strength training facility way back in the day. He had been creating an early version of the product to battle his own gut health issues when he realized how challenging and expensive it was to create an optimal routine on your own. I started taking it during those college baseball years and was completely hooked. Over the years, it has kept me feeling on point physically and mentally. The best part, it fits into whatever lifestyle or diet I'm currently experimenting with, from keto to paleo to vegan and more. It's a tiny micro habit that you can execute daily that has large, long-term, and compounding benefits. The product has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is trusted by a long list of professional athletes and leading health experts. I love it, they do, and I know you will too. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com WIH. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash W-I-H to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. You won't regret it. Yeah, I think, um, 
you do have to put on a bit of a face when you're talking to your team or VCs or advisors. Like it's, it's hard to be a hundred percent unfiltered, but with other builders, it's hard not to be, it's hard to be anything but a hundred percent unfiltered. Right. So you, it's your time to be yeah. like, okay, here's what's really going down. I'd really love your opinion on X, Y, Z. And I don't think I told, I don't know if I've said this on the pod yet, but um, every year me and a group of uh, six or seven entrepreneurs used to rent a house in LA um, and it was like a mastermind basically of founders. Mm -hmm. And we actually hired a moderator and we hired like a chef. And I know this is sound bougie as hell, but like not, you know, initially not a, not a lot of us had money. We just like poured it into this. Um, and we would sit there and we would all work on each other, you know, work with each other, unfiltered mastermind founders. And like, we had like Sean Pori was one of those founders. Um, Julian Smith, who, you know, who's been on, he's a guest friend of the pod. Uh, you really? know, he came up with breather there. Um, I came up with islands there, flow water, Nicholas Reichenbach, who create, you know, it's in every whole foods across the nation. He came up with it there. Uh, it's now a publicly mm. traded company. And I've been thinking a lot about masterminds and I want people to hit me up if this is interesting to them. Um, but like, Dude, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta bring it back. You know, I, th right? I think it'd be, I think it'd be awesome to, to, to bring it back. Yeah. I think it's awesome also. Cause like, especially cause so many of us live on Twitter and, and places like that, where it's just like, you just, okay. There's a couple of things. So, People are, you know, spend a lot of time on Twitter and you can't really get feedback really on places like that. And then yeah. big events, big conferences and stuff like that is just like, you're not, it's so hard to find your people there. So like these yeah. smaller, like six to eight, 10 high quality, trusted people, bring them together, do, you know, do it proper. Um, I feel like that, first of all, I, no, I feel like that's, it's a huge opportunity for founders and also, like, mm. I feel like it needs to exist. And all, like, I also think you can build a business around that. I, I, I tell you, I had this like, weird epiphany the other day. Not epiphany, but just like how, how I think of things. And it's funny that we're talking about this in such a public or, or a semi-public uh, <laughs> forum. But it's like the more public a place is, even if it's for discussion, you know, conversation, the more judgment there is, right? And I think judgment, like a, the, the level of judgment in an area is inversely uh, correlated to how like actually meaningful the interactions are going to be, you know, like think that on Twitter, like, Oh, it went viral with 300,000 likes, you know, you feel this like dopamine rip of like, wow, all these awesome people may have liked it or a lot of people saw it, but like how meaningful was that versus a room that's low judgment, where someone can bring up some really deep shit or like some whatever's on their chest and like talk about it. And know that, like, no, this is not like something that's going to people like screenshot and share around and all that toxic, you know, whatever stuff is going to go there. But it's, it's a, just a meaningful place. And so, yeah, I, I, I think about at least for builders, you thrive in low judgment zones. Um, I, I, look, I've never been to Burning Man, and I, I think everyone has their their say. It's, it's now actually a high judgment zone from the from the the peanut gallery of like what actually happens at Burning Man these days. But I think the idea of a place where people can actually kind of let their hair down and be themselves amongst a similar all you know amongst other people whether they know them well or not and and to, and to share ideas and, and talk through this shit sounds kind of awesome so anyways your masterminds sound dope i mean uh, i'd love the i'd love to join the, the one that you the first one you do when you bring them back you know yeah i mean maybe we can even share this like i think it needs to be sort of like it also needs to be fun right like so we would do you know 50 percent like structured okay, everyone has a certain amount of time. These are the questions you can ask. Like, I think the structure is really important. That's why the moderator is key to the whole thing. And then yeah. we would have fun at like night times, like dinners going out. I don't know if we can show this image I, I saw like on a, like, you know, one time, the only time I've shot a gun was in LA at one of these events. Um, oh, and uh, yeah, maybe we can like post the like in the show notes. I'll I'll, I'll find the the picture. Oh. It's like twelve years ago. By the way, non sponsored uh, plug. If you ever want a cool place to shoot guns in a place that 
isn't about shooting guns. Drivetanks.com. Uh, I don't even know if it's still around, but it's in the mid, it's like two hours outside of Austin. You can literally drive tanks and then the belt, belt, it's like, it's very, it's very safe. They take care of it for you. And right. should you desire to, you know, build like you'll, like a used car, like they'll let you aim the cannon and shoot it. Also, you'll let you shoot a howitzer. I actually now remember you can also shoot actual guns, like, like bear decals, or like mini guns. It's very safe, very supervised, very like, team off-site e energy but uh it's a great place to you know like blow off some steam you know it's pretty cool yeah i mean listen i'm uh, i think uh if you're gonna do a, an off-site mastermind type thing like that like put it around something like that so you also have these like new experience like how many times have you driven a tank like for me like never right so then like not that i really want to drive a tank at all or shoot a gun but like the fact that i'm going to do this with this group is like a bonding experience yeah, I I'm sorry. I just opened drivetanks.com and looked at their sizzle reel on their front page, and uh, it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty awesome. You know, I, I kind of <laughs> oh man, this is a, literally amazing. First of all, wow. So what I'm looking at is I can't I can't believe this exists. It looks like, yeah. it's <laughs> it's like <laughs> dude, it's a tank literally going over a fully like tank that could be in Iraq or whatever, like going over a car yep. and like shooting missiles from it. I look, I've done this. I've done the like crush a car underneath it. I've definitely done the shot. And I actually like this website. It's a pretty good, um, you know, like when I talk about like those conversion, like front page conversions, I'm like, it's so simple. It's called drivetanks.com. The three offerings are drive a tank, shoot a tank, shoot big guns. Uh, you know, uh, they, they they got to the point really quickly. It's it's, um, it's pretty good. Okay, I'm I'm pulling up the price list. I'm curious how much this cost. Wow. Okay. So there's a bunch of tanks. They've got like 12 different types of tanks. I got to be real with you all. I have no idea what the different tanks are. But the the cheapest tank to drive is going to cost you uh, 600 bucks. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is totally doable. The most expensive, like baller, you came up with a billion dollar idea today at the end of the mastermind is the Stug 3. It's $2,200. You know, some good. And, they, and they, yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm literally not here to bug them. I think they have some packages too. But, you know, hey, uh, for what people spend on like bottle service in the club versus uh, a once in a lifetime memory driving a tank, you know, I, I think they're, they're, you know, um, yeah. Cool. No, I'm happy you made. I'm I'm happy you talked about that. So no, I think yeah, I think it's really important to 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 drive tanks at your at your at your mastermind. And I think like, um, yeah, just re- do do things that are that are going to open you up, both on on the structured piece of it of coming up with ideas, but also on the um, bonding piece of it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, Going back, we talked a little bit about, you know, sort of Web 2, SF, and, but before that, we talked about Web 3, and I want to I understand what, what Danny Trin's current state, you know, lay of the land of how you're feeling about Web 3 and, and right now. Oh, gosh. I, I think uh, my, my, my short answer would be, you know, it is, it is definitely a surly winter. I think there's a lot of really cool people that I'm seeing charging forward and continuing to build. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's uh, kind of poetic that one of them is, is Kevin, you know, I, I think he recently just moved down to LA and, and, and like, there's really building out the proof team from my understanding there and like really going for it. Um, and I'm really excited. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, yeah, and it's, it's, um, it's crazy last week. Yeah. I, I just realized that a bunch of other great people, uh, in, in that same, in the same crew and family are all there and, and kind of pushing. And so I'll say like, it's kind of awesome to see, you know, um, the, 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 yeah, that is that same kind of uh, what's, what's the right word for it? Um, yeah, the the perseverance and also the conviction to keep going. Like it's that's awesome to see. Now, overall Web three, a lot of other crazy shit. Like Do Kwan, you know, he's got Interpol, he's got a code red on out for him. Uh, that's kind of awesome. Uh, sorry, I don't want to, I, I don't want to laugh at other people's misfortune. I think it's just you know, there's all kinds of corrections on the good and bad. Um, and yeah, it's 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 a spicy time. I mean, it's, it's absolutely winter. So, you know, a lot of the jokers are going to leave. A lot of the tourists are going to leave. 
Um, and it's, it's, pro it's definitely for the best. I think this time last year, you're probably at peak hype mania, uh, just blew up like a uh, bad, uh, not, and okay. I want to probably some point, not bad that like, it was all bad, just that there was just a lot of noise that probably wasn't healthy. Absolutely is not healthy. Um, yeah, we're back to winter. Uh, if you believe in the space, you believe in the space. If you're someone who was talking shit about it all for the last 18 months, two years, you feel very right. You feel very like uh, validated. Uh, I don't think this will be the last winter. I, I think that there will absolutely be a future here. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see how it all goes down. Um, yeah, I think if anything, it's, it's good that teams can be quiet and less distracted. Like think about it, if you had a team in this space over the last 18 months, especially on the run up, you're probably dealing with a bunch of you know, more than 18 months, years, you're dealing with a bunch of crazy distractions or probably everyone's trying to hire their other, other, <laughs> other people constantly wondering like, am I working on the right thing? Am I like, missing out on like life changing opportunity, working on something else or trading something else or whatever. And now that things are more quiet, like there's, there's going to be a ton more folks who are, are just focusing, like, you know, uh, kind of really pure about things and, and do it and, you know, making, making the moves they want to make. And I think we'll see where it all nets out. Who even knows how the rest of the world nets out, you know, um, right now, like I, I think we're probably another six to nine months of a, a minimum of like sliding into finding where the bottom of in darkness is. Um, so it's something I definitely, you know, I don't think about every day. It's not my, it's not my day job. Uh, but it's definitely something I'm keeping, keeping tabs on, you know? Yeah. How do you, um, like, I know, I know you've got a day job, but I do know that you're also like a lot of web two founders in that era. Like we talked about Josh Williams, like he's in web three now, Kevin Rose web two, you know, prolific web two founder. Yeah. He's in web three. Yeah. I've yeah. been doing a lot of web three stuff and a lot of our friends in that, you know, Donnie Dinch web three now, um, what do you th like why do you think we're attracted to web3 and why do you think that we're still excited about it um and do you have like are you less or more excited about it than let's say a year ago i i so there's something that this is some advice i gave about this stuff to we were almost literally this time last year to someone that was just just getting into it i was like you need to divorce two brains if you're a product builder in this space one is like why you're building and what you're building and what you're excited about and the second is like the generative greed <laughs> degen greed on like trading and, and and making money because i'm like if you let the two brains come together it's going to get very messy for you and your enthusiasm and your motivation is going to be this like toxic mix of like why are you building you know um and so i think obviously for anyone that's in it for degenerative the degen greed uh, they've lost a ton of enthusiasm as things cool down and then you got to like, you know, uh, like seek shelter. But I think for a lot of people, they're building it for what I would call the right reasons, which are like the primitives are changing and it's the promise of like a better future. Um, yeah, I think a lot of those people and everyone I talk to is, is it's almost like business as usual. Like they're continuing on amidst the challenge, right? And this is not the first or last time that the people in this space have dealt with crazy challenges or being told they're completely wrong and silly. Like, it's funny to me, I actually remember probably around that time, 2016, when you and I were hanging out in Southern Pacific, where, like, I feel like it was chatbots, AI, and crypto were, like, the three, like, laughing, like, you could, like, the, like, the butt end of every joke, right? Like, oh, remember that person who worked on chatbots? Remember that person who worked on crypto stuff? Remember that person who worked on AI? And it's kind of funny now, at least in 2022, that I'm like, AI, like, nothing to joke about with AI. Like, some of the crazy, truly, like, crazy shit is happening before our eyes and like making it into very like into the mainstream, right? Crypto, like, and no one's laughing about, I mean, you may laugh at the collapse, but like if you're laughing at that collapse, you're laughing at the economy's collapse, which is, you know, um, but, you know, that, that's your prerogative. And maybe, yeah, chatbots. Yeah, like if, if anyone's working on a chatbot now, I'd still be like, what, what are you doing there, uh, folks? Um, but so, so but what I did is like- What are you doing there, this, folks? <laughs> like, uh, that's probably my PC. Uh, it's my like PC, uh, uh, but whatever. But like, but you know, it goes in cycles, right? And like, I think the thing about people who are generally excited about these things, like their enthusiasm gets tested and retested. And the, the ones that tend to, to last through multiple winters and do the best are the ones that keep persisting, right? Like if, if your conviction in, the, in some of these spaces is, is so low that you get, you know, you, you can drop this quickly, you probably aren't working in the, the right space, you know? 
Um, and, and if anything, I think one thing we can't deny is that the, the conversations changed, right? Like the conversation on the types of people who are interested in this stuff and the types of things they're building is, is now like we, we, we've opened, we've, we're, we've gone through a one way door, right? Because so many major companies, so many major like, like universes of IP are, are into this now. But it's going to be really exciting to see what happens. Um, I, I think that's the one thing about right now. You're like, oh, are you still excited about it? I'm like, well, whether I am or not excited about it, I'm absolutely not going to ignore it. You know, like the, the, the thing about it right now is like the, it's, it's, it's typically the people that ignore shifts like these are the ones who are the cautionary tales. It's like the Nokia guy talking shit about the iPhone, you know, or, or like uh, every, or like all the like the big consumer web apps that were like the kind of shitting on like the move to mobile in general, you know. Um, and yeah, it's I, I think typically the, the folks who, who are default dismissive of 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 interesting new things that typically take years to bore out. Those are the ones that like, uh, you know, history always remembers as the fools. And so I, I think right now, look, tough times. But guess what? been here before multiple times right. you know and so i i think it's um it's interesting to see you know so who knows what are your who knows what this all goes what are your thoughts uh on web3 loyalty i saw a few weeks ago starbucks obviously launched a a really big push into loyalty i'm curious uh what you think think around that yeah. That that's in the. I, I hope that a recording of this podcast doesn't become like a cautionary tale. Me sounding like an idiot a few years from now. Um, I, I think my immediate reaction is like it's cool to see them build. It's cool to see them experiment. Back to what you're talking about, like SF 2008. It's like when I was teenager, still my youngster and a beginner's mind at heart. I'm like, it's awesome to see people experimenting, even if it doesn't work out. I'm like, net net, something they did when in that experiment will probably be a building block that someone else grabs and uses and, and, and takes off. I think Starbucks is probably going nowhere. Maybe this is like the funny quote where like three years from now, Starbucks implodes. Um, but like, I, I don't think Starbucks is going anywhere. So cool on them to experiment with some stuff. Maybe they'll change their approach. Maybe they won't, you know? It's kind of like Motor before the iPhone, Motorola made the rocker with Apple, which had a 99 song limit on it. And everyone thought like, this, if this is the iPhone, this is not the future. I'm like, okay. I think people will experiment with loyalty stuff just as like music entities are trying to figure out what the, pardon, like, yeah what the fuck that actually all means, you know? Uh, but yeah, I think that's essential to getting there. Um, there. There's a book I really love about like, you know, like a, a good model for innovation is like you have artists and soldiers, right? And like they're defined by their relationship with risk, right? And so like soldiers are fundamentally about low risk because you don't want to kill everybody. And artists are fundamentally about high risk. You're rewarded to take lots of risks and to fail a lot, fail a lot. And typically soldiers and artists hate each other's guts because they misunderstand each other. Like soldiers look at artists and like, you don't do any work. You don't have any discipline. You're just trying a bunch of stuff that goes nowhere. And artists look at soldiers and like, you're so like, like unafraid of trying anything new. And like, you're so, you're like, you're going to be like left behind. And I would say that's the moment where we are right now. And like in one of these, like, like, you know, winters where the artists and the soldiers look at each other and, and, and think the other one is the fool. Right, like mm -hmm. the, the, the the there are many artists like you're talking about Don, like you're talking about some great friends. They're, we're going to continue to push on and try things, Starbucks, whatnot. Like I think there's a ton of other companies trying stuff, and the soldiers who are like trying to survive, you know, an economic recession or worse, are looking at them like you idiots. I can't believe you're, you're continuing to move on, you know. And that's my take of right now is that it, it's it's artists and soldiers. I use this same model actually, like for, for people who are working teams where you have an office still. You know, the people who come in super early and we also leave early and people who come in super late and leave late. And I'm like, oh, there's those two people judge each other just at different times of the day. Like er those early people come in. They're like, oh, I can't believe so and so is not here yet. And then those people that come in late see those early people leaving early. You're like, oh, I can't believe you're calling it. You're throwing in the towel so early, you know. And, and so, you know, uh, fleshing out my answer here, I, I think. When I look at stuff like Starbucks or I, I see people trying out stuff, I'm like, okay, I think I net bias towards the artist lens, which is I love seeing people try stuff, even if it goes, you know, to zero and, and fails, because that's what gives me energy, you know, like uh, seeing people tr like take, take a shot. Now, yeah, I, do I advise the artist lifestyle for soldiers or the soldier lifestyle for artists? No. Um, and so, you know, I, I think especially when you look at something as polarizing as Web3 right now, it's like really easy for folks on both sides to get really entrenched in their positions. 
Um, and so maybe my, my last thing on this long ramble, I'd say is like, I would ask someone where they think they are like deep down on it. And if they could empathize for a second for a little bit with the other side. Um, and, and that, that's my, my take on Web3 is like, it, it's, it's a look in the mirror for how you feel about these things in general. Um, and so someone who's a soldier by day works a big company life and like only like scales things, looks for like two to five to 10 percent, God forbid, gains. Uh, looks at some of these moves as like really risky or like, like career ending. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's just worth the way you're It's sitting. cool that people are experimenting. Like it's it, like, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that on, on the start, you know, from a startup of one to a startup of Starbucks or a company of Starbucks, like that we're, we're kind of, we're not taking the status quo as like, okay, this is the world we live in. And like, these are the products that exist. No, we're going to like push the envelope over here, push the envelope over here, try different things. And we'll find out what, what is going to resonate with, with folks. Um, yeah. But I, th I think, um, I think it's cool that, first of all, I love the soldier um, artist and like kind of way of thinking about it. And I also think it's cool that I happen to be on your camp. Like I, I love, I like when I see people, um, on Twitter, for example, like seeing the launch of a startup and being like, but actually, you know, like the, but actually guy, um, mm. but actually this is a bad idea because X, Y, Z. And it's like, no, like we need to celebrate people builders. Yeah. I, I mean, if, if anything, think about like, I look at like this, like if you're a meme account that loves to like trade on being like, you know, making hilarious jokes, but other people and. God knows I love a good meme and I love, I love, I, there's so many accounts I find very hilarious, but net net, I think a lot of those meme accounts pander to like the soldier type who likes to be, you know, likes to be like, yeah, duh, look at that failure or like, oh, so clearly bad or like, oh, got him, you know, got him. Yeah, got and, him. And, 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 you know, like, ooh, and I'm like, okay, go back to your like, whatever life, you know, like they, they chuckle at the meme, they, they, they heart it and they move on with their like, whatever the fuck they're doing for the rest of the day. And it's like, okay, you know, the, it, it is, it's, it's what makes this account successful. And like, uh, it's, it, it's what gets their engagement up, you know? And I can't knock that hustle either because they're slowly trying to like get X, like blow up and, and make a business. I'm sure whatever they're doing, like, and be, be hilarious. Um, it's just not, you know, I, I'd like to think in my pure heart that I, I I'm not, uh, I'm not there, even though I know I'm probably very guilty of, of that, that same type of uh, dunking sometimes. But yeah, like I think that that it's uh, on the on the on the spectrum of like soldier to artists, like the audience of the people like giving giving all that like feedback of like got them are just like tend not to be artists, you know, like that it's, and and that's fine, it's totally fine. Um, yeah, cool. Let's uh, that's a mic drop. I think that's a lot for people to to digest and think about where they sit on the spectrum, and. Yeah. Um, artist versus versus soldier and um d you're 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 your family you know you're not just a friend of the pod you're you're in the family so thanks for coming back on and uh where can people yeah. find you on the internet yeah just d, d Trin is my my twitter and, and what i'd say is I, I hope you stay safe with hurricane ian i hope that maybe when this comes out there hopefully hurricane ian is well passed you know um or else your hair is gonna be a lot more wet you know what i mean <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be recording a podcast like in the a little, a little hurricane, uh, but yeah, it's it's always a, a good lot time. of uh, Eventbrite yeah. RSVPs. You know, Hurricane Ian. It's just hitting hitting that Eventbrite RSVP a few times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, wishing you all the best, man. And and and, and for, candidly, I, I think if anything, this is just like a semi-public FaceTime with you. So I I'm like uh, I'm glad to catch up and then see you. Yeah. And hear your voice. It's, it's great to see. You. It's great to hear you. And and that's like that's the new vision of of the where it happens pod is just like catching up with friends basically publicly who are interesting in creators, commerce and community. And, and then people mm -hmm. listen to this and you're going to be smarter because you're, you're going to listen, you, you know, you might not agree with Kate? everything we say. Oh shit. Yeah. What? Go for it, Danny. No, I have a crazy idea for your format. I mean, if you call it like FaceTime with friends, it could be literally like your screen recording and like you're actually, it's like, it's an authentic, to make, keep it authentic. It's like you right. kind of tell, maybe you tell, it's almost like, remember like who wants to be a millionaire? You would tell the, the phone of friend people roughly to be available in case their friend was on the show and they were being called. 
But like you could show literally you FaceTiming some people and they're not there. They hang up or like they say like can't, they don't answer the call. And then finally someone picks up and they're like Yahtzee, you know. Um, and like and that's who we got this week, you know. Uh, but like you just keeping it real. They're like, hey, have we tried a few people? Like, uh, you know, and then bam, like right now we're just going to FaceTime with friends and keep it super chill. Um, I like yeah. it. I mean, dude, there's enough interview podcasts like where it's like, OK, hey, like so tell me about tell me your story. And it's like, okay, I went to here and went to there. It's like, no, I, I think that's, you know, going back to like the trenches and, and stories in the trenches. I think people, that's, I think that's what people want to hear. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. So thank thank you for coming on and, and being uh, episode number one of the V2 of where it happens. Uh, and, and, you know, folks uh, stick with us because it's going to be, it's going to be a good time and uh, you're not going to want to miss it. So thank you so much. Subscribe, subscribe. YouTube. Oh yeah. Make sure make, yeah. Make sure you smash that like, comment, subscribe button. And, you know uh, it, you know, know, YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, tell your friends where it happens is what's happening. Thank you.